Hello, everyone. Let's share the screen. Please let me know if you can see the slides. Let's wait a few seconds here until everybody joined. Perfect, thank you. So how are you guys doing? Yeah, everything is okay. I hope everyone is uh, doing fine and, uh, you know, getting ready for wrapping up the semester. Okay, I uh, guess as semester is progressing, less number of people attending the lecture, which is fine. I hope people can catch up with um, the you know the, the recording of the lecture and making sure that you also utilize all the time during the tutorial session to uh, ask questions or you can also uh, uh, join all the session for the office hours i don't get uh, i don't get so many people asking questions after the lecture but um, i'm hoping that uh, as you guys uh, catch up and make sure that you are preparing for the exam if you have question, please send me an email and we can meet anytime and discuss uh, whatever uh, you are kind of, you know, uh, struggling with. So, um, so as last time, actually, we, uh, we spend more time talking about uh, flow and piping uh, more than what is planned for this course. But I'm still uh, fine with that because I mentioned to you that this is one of the major important topic in fluid mechanics. Uh, Basically, uh, most of the system that we deal with as an engineer is fluid flow in systems. And many times we are asked to design a system that is carrying fluid from point A to point B. And we need to design this system. We need to come up with um, uh, an equipment that drives this flow. Uh, so in chapter 11, we're going to talk about uh, the pump in terms of like, you know, um, an equipment that can carry liquids in systems. Uh, but in general, we have to come up with some kind of design criteria for, for that. So we spent time in the last uh, few lectures talking about uh, uh, the losses in the piping system. We talk about like a different kind of losses and how can we determine these losses. Uh, last time we talk about like piping component and how can we determine these uh, from uh, different kind of tables that is providing information about something called the loss coefficient uh, for different uh, uh, component. We call this uh, piping system as uh, a component that creates eddy losses. And if you remember, uh, we also mentioned that those eddy losses are, are kind of, you know, in many cases considered to be like a, a secondary losses. But, you know, in, in general, you can consider this is just, a, you know, an additional losses that you might have uh, if the system consists of many, uh, many of these components. And, you know, majority of the cases, uh, friction losses considered to be a major losses. But, you know, in some, uh, you know, specific uh, cases that, you know, the minor losses or like, you know, the eddy losses can be considered a big value compared to uh, the friction as well. But uh, that's why I'd like to consider it as what we call it secondary or AD losses. Some design consideration, if you remember, we, uh, we talk about, uh, uh, you know, the difference between these type of losses. And I mentioned uh, fittings and piping, you know, normally negligible if we have like a, a very large, uh, you know, uh, straight pipes in, you know, carrying fluid from like cities or like, you know, even in, you know, in a water transportation system, you might see uh, those losses uh, in, in piping component are negligible. But if we have information about them in, uh, in the problem or in the design, we should really consider also uh, including all the losses uh, we have, okay? Two things that you have to keep in mind is when you, you know, under design the system, what do you mean under design? That you mean, 
you know, when you calculate the losses, you didn't calculate the right numbers. You might, you know, calculate a lower number. Now, when you are getting uh, the right equipment for that, like or the pump size, as we uh, we discussed in the last uh, example in the last lecture. So now you determine the power requirement for this pump, and you get a smaller pump. Now you end up with, you know, um, you know, the system cannot deliver what is, uh, you know, the capacity that you want, the amount of flow rate that you want. So you have to be sure, like, you know, you are not really doing an under design by calculating a lower uh, losses in the system. Or in the opposite side, if you, you know, overdoing like your calculation and you are kind of considering much more information or much more values for these losses, and now you end up with an over design of the system. So you end up with getting for like for this pump, if you put it in the system, you get a very high flow rate. So in this case, you have to come up with a, a way of reducing this flow rate. And the only way to do this is getting a throttling valve. Like a, you are basically adding a valve, closing the valve a little bit in order to reduce the flow. So now you are not utilizing the full amount of energy, but you are wasting a lot of energy. Because you are closing the valve, that means you are losing energy of the system that you could have avoided if you calculate, you know, uh, uh, you know the right uh, value for these uh, losses uh, in your uh, in your system. Uh, also, I mentioned last time that we um, we have to consider the manufacturer data for the, the piping component, and I give you a few examples for tables and charts. But those not are the only chart available in the uh, in the market. So you might see, uh, you know, many uh, different kind of chart available. And what you need to do is like making sure that how to determine this loss coefficient in your uh, in your system, specifically for valves like you know, elbows and reducers. You don't tend to find so many variations uh, of these charts. But for valves specifically, even for the same type of valve, you might find different value for loss coefficient between two companies that are manufacturing these type of valves. So please consider uh, all these in your, uh, in your design calculations. So now when we talk about piping system, piping system is not a very straight, you know, simple uh, pipe has one diameter between point A and point B. So you might see a piping system that has what we call it uh, a connection of uh, series uh, pipes. So pipe connected in series like this. So uh, in this case, we have the first pipe with a small diameter, maybe a bigger pipe connected in series to this, and then a third pipe. And you might even have additional component here. So you might have an elbow here, or you might have a valve here, right? Uh, so in this case, we are considering the, you know, the typical system available in the in many engineering application is not a single pipe with one diameter without uh, any uh, component. So in general, we might see uh, piping uh, uh, connected in series like this. It could be uh, you know, a combination of multiple uh, pipe diameters and also a combination of uh, you know, uh, 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 piping components. The series mean here, like you know, the pipe connected in series, that means the flow rates, you know, so the Q at one, is basically is equal q2 is equal is equal q3 which means the flow rate is going all the way between a and b and passing through every part of the system and these q are equal okay uh, uh, another complex system where you have uh, like you know you are transporting uh, fluid from point a to point b but now through a different a different uh, line and in this case, we are considering a different type of, uh, you know, of connection. We call it parallel, you know, uh, piping uh, component. So parallel piping component mean, you know, the amount of flow rate Q total here will be split into three, right? Depend on like, you know, uh, uh, you know, some condition that we're going to discuss uh, today, okay? So now the energy at point A is the same, the energy at point B the same, but now the flow rate will be splitting. And this Q total should be equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, okay? So the mass, uh, the conservation of mass at any joint or at any junction should be satisfied in this case. Whatever mass coming in should be equal to the mass going out. I, I'm just putting it here in terms of flow rate. Uh, or volume flow rate because we are mainly considering in our cases here uh, liquids in this case. 
Okay, so density is is uh, maintained constant, and uh, now we, you know the uh, the volume flow rate uh, of the flow coming in equal to the volume flow rate that is going out at each junction of uh, of this pipe. So this is a second type of uh, piping system, which means that you know there's different kind of complexity in this system. Okay, this complexity become even more when you have flow between uh, piping, like, like for example, in this case here, and those tanks, this is a tank. So for example, tank three, this is tank two, right? And this is tank one, okay? If you remember, uh, we spent some time uh, in the last lecture talking about the elevation of the tank here, okay? Do you remember what this elevation is representing in the tank? What is this elevation representing in the tank? Energy, excellent, all right. right? So those are basically the energy level inside this tank. So when we are presenting this system like this, we didn't mean exactly it's a tank. It's just like we are saying this level of energy at this point that much can be considered as an elevation of a tank, right? It could be a pump, like it could be some, you know, uh, you know, system or equipment, right? Uh, but in, 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 in general, those level or these elevations, right, inside these tanks are representing energy, okay? So you might see, for example, an energy between, you know, uh, uh, the difference between this energy in this tank here and this tank there, okay? So let's say, for example, here, this is actual actual level. This is here. And this is here. So now, okay, or let me just uh, let me just add one here just to have this discussion going. And this is piping, okay? So this is Z1, this is Z2, this is Z3, and those are piping, okay? Let me, and this is an, you know, a datum here. Okay, now let's just say, for example, this is, oops, uh, this is pipe A, and this is pipe B, and this is pipe C. Let me ask you a question here, okay? Those are, uh, you know, a, a, an actual elevation. Like, you know, if you look at here, this is a datum, right? Okay. Let me ask you in, in, in vibe A, sorry, vibe B, for example, where is the flow rate is going? This way or this way? Like, you know, up or down? down why is that okay why no guys don't ever say gravity higher energy right so i have an energy level that is highest in this whole system you know if you look at this system this is a system of three tanks right one of these tanks has the highest energy right so this level here is the highest level of energy. That means the flow rate has to come out, right? So in this case, the flow rate here, this is QB has to be in this direction, okay? So which means that this is, that's wrong, okay? Let me ask you now, how about the, you know, uh, the, uh, the flow rate at point C or like the pipe C, is it going down or up? Mm. So this pipe here, down, why down? High to low, okay, I'm not considering this high or low, right? This could be, you know, this could be um, a three-dimensional view of this piping. All this piping could be, you know, even all on the horizontal plane, 
but the level of the fluid in the tank are, you know, a different level here, okay? So this is an elevation that is high. This is the highest one. This is Z3. This is Z2, Z1. Those piping here is not really physically as it looks like. It could be whatever, right? Just piping, right? So, but what is what is actually this pipe is going to? Is going to the lowest level of tanks, right? The lowest level of energy in this whole system. Okay, so when I look at this system here, when, when I say is the flow is going down or up, it looks like this energy of this tank here is the lowest energy in the whole system, right? So the fluid inside this pipe here has to go, has to go down. Let me read here. The point exit is, uh, okay, so, okay. So in this case, I have, I have a flow going like this, okay? Now let's call this is point J, right? So where is the fluid in point A? Is it up or down or pipe B, A? Hmm. Down. Anybody up? Anyone saying up? Uh, anyone, you guys, please don't, uh, yeah, don't be intimidated by my questions. Say whatever you think is, you know, based on your understanding. Could be up or could be, uh, could be down too, right? Because it's all depend on the energy of this point, right? Is the energy, okay, let me again repeat this. Those piping here, right this is not a physical you know orientation of this piping okay the only valid orientation here or the only valid elevation here is this level here this level here is far from the ground you know the ground or a datum here by this level and one of them is middle and one is lower one is high right okay but those piping here could be laid out on even in, a, in, in you know on the floor right so this could be kind of you know it's not really a real elevation here okay so the tank elevation is energy but those piping can be laid out depend on like you know the energy uh, in, you know in this point now at this point j here you might see this point here has higher energy than then point, you know, this point here inside the tank, okay? Which mean that the flow will come from this big tank and then split going up like this, right? And down like this, or the flow that can come from this high, you know, uh, level tank, and then some flow come from this other tank and all both are combined and then going down like this, right? Which mean that this part here, Depends the energy level. Okay, what do you mean energy level here? Remember, is not is not anymore a, 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 a potential energy, right? At inside the pipe, energy is pressure plus v square over two g plus gravity, right? Potential, right? But in the tank, it just happened to be like, it's just the elevation of the tank. It's just like, you know, well-defined. But inside the pipe, the pressure could be high, right? So in this case, we don't know which one is higher energy. Is this elevation here or the point inside the pipe like this, right? So this, uh, uh, you know, this option here or this kind of, you know, um, uh, alternative, you know, uh, flow rates could be up or down, depend on the flow. That's why, you know, this system here, a little bit more complex because we don't know what is what to expect. So it's going to be some kind of iterations uh, error uh, in order to determine the total flow rate uh, inside the piping system. Similar to this one, right? So this one here and also this one here, right? It all depends on like, you know, this is kind of a simple network 
piping network, right? And this piping network could be representing um, water distribution in in a, inside the city, right? So different street, the flow is going from one location to another location and so on, right? You might see a variation of the flow direction here, depend on the energy at every single junction, okay? So at every single junction, we have to calculate, you know, the energy difference between here and here, right? In order to find out if this flow is going up or down like this, right? Which means that I will have to do like, you know, a lots of reiterative method inside every, uh, every loop like this, right? So that's why we require a little bit more, uh, 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 you know, um, an algorithm to solve the flow in this pipe network, okay? Uh, again, as I mentioned in, in this course, we are kind of giving you, uh, you know, first layer of understanding in flood mechanics. So we are not going to get into uh, these kind of, uh, you know, uh, in these kind of uh, problems, okay? So either this uh, multiple uh, energy system or a piping network, that's not going to be part of our, uh, you know, course uh, for, for this year, okay? So what we're going to do only is basically looking into a series, a pipe connected in series and pipe also connected in, in parallel because it doesn't require that much, uh, you know, um, type of uh, reiterative solution for that, uh, for that analysis. Okay. So, um, so piping in series, actually we did cover it when we uh, solved the problem uh, last time. And if you remember, you know, going from point A here to, you know, point, uh, point B, we are going through a different type of component. So in this case, fractional losses, right? So this is a fraction, and this is the eddy uh, losses, right? Okay. So in this case, we have to determine the total losses by just applying Bernoulli equation between A and B and considering all the component between these two points, okay? So piping in series, it's already a common sense that we solved already last time. Now, parallel pipe, okay, we said energy at point A and energy at point B for all the piping are the same, right? Because it's the same junction. So this is the energy here is just an energy at point A. So it is common between all the pipe, okay? So let me ask you now, if this is a Q total, this is Q1, this is Q2, and this is Q3, conservation of mass, If density is constant, okay, Q total is basically Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, okay? Okay, so in this case, we have all the Qs here is equal to Q total. What do you think, you know, the energy at point A and the energy at point B, right? This is energy at point A, this is energy at point B. Where is the difference between energy A and energy B? What is the difference between energy A and energy B? And some people were asking last time in the lecture, what is the energy head, okay? Uh, energy head is basically like, you know, what we put the Bernoulli equation, we put it all in terms of head, in order to be able to present it on what we call it, the hydraulic energy line and total energy line. And we are converting the units of every single energy into a unit of meter, which means that we can call the energy instead of like a total energy, we call it the energy head, okay? So is the energy difference here, uh, the losses between the points, right? So the energy between A and B are the losses between, you know, uh, you know point A and point B, right? So this is, the difference here will be delta energy is equal to energy loss, okay? And if this is a head A and this is a head B, it's gonna be head loss between A and B, okay? So let me ask you the second question. What do you think like this Q1 and Q2 and Q3, are they equal?
depend on the area. Okay. Okay. Can we can we be more specific, please? Can we be more accurate in uh, the way that we're presenting our ideas? Okay. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, depend on what? Elevation. Okay. How about all these piping are laid on the floor? Right, I can look at from the top kind of thing. Mm. What drive the flow? Okay, so first of all, are they equal or can be different? Uh, okay, depend on the fraction of the pipe. Okay, uh, Emerson writes, depend on the fraction of the pipe, depend on the fraction losses. Uh, okay, I, I think you guys assume that those piping doesn't have any eddy component, right? You, you, you are assuming this, right? Are you assuming there is no elbows and anything that is we don't see here in the picture, right? Those are just a, a strip pipes. So I agree with you that it all depends on the fractional losses, right? So velocity of the flow, okay. All these are insides, you know, uh, you know, inside the fractional loss uh, calculations, right? And some people were saying, I guess, at some point, the area, it's actually not the area is, yeah, the area of the pipe, which is the diameter of the pipe, because the diameter of the pipe is function, like, or the losses is a function of the diameter, okay? So it's not the area, because area is, when you start talking about area, you start talking about mass conservation of mass. So velocity times area is equal, you know, we're not talking about this. We're talking about the losses in between, you know, The loss is here, and loss is here, and loss is here. Okay. Now, let me just uh, confuse you a little bit. Is the losses between, you know, in, in one, and two, and three are the same or different? How? If you go, this is a point A, and this is point B. H losses here is the energy of point A, one is energy of point B. If you look at it from this pipe here, what is the energy loss through this line here, along the streamline here? Mm. The losses between A and B through this line is H loss between A and B, which is energy A minus energy B, which is the same, right? which mean that the energy loss in A, H loss one, equal H loss two, equal H loss three. Why? Because it is equal, you know, you know the uh, uh, head of A minus head of B, head energy A minus head en energy B, right? So when you are saying that it's, you know, fraction will be different, Okay, it's gonna be different because diameter is different, could be, right? The lens could be different. The total losses in fraction equal, right? And this way that we have to change Q in order to make sure that the losses is equal. Okay, let me, let me give you an example that you, you guys all understand. When we have, when you are basically looking at electric circuit like this, okay? So the voltage here, this is a voltage, voltage two, this delta V here is your voltage difference, okay? In electric circuit, right? Now, what will be the currents? One, two, and three. Do you agree with me that the voltage difference across every single line is the same or not? Yes, right? So the voltage difference in the fluid is energy difference. It's even called in electrical, you know, in electrical uh, circuits, it's called it like electric motive force, right? So the driving, what is driving the current 
is the energy difference or the voltage difference in this case, right? So in this case, we have a voltage, right? That is driving this current here and current here and current there. And it's all depend on the resistance, right? Okay. Resistance mean not losses. H losses here is, the losses here is, in this circuit here, is what? The resistance here is those pieces of information about the, 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 the resistance itself. But the difference between this point here and this point here is the same for this line, this line, and this line, okay? So the same thing for the float. And if we are doing analogy between this, This analogy is the voltage difference is H losses. Okay. The current is Q, right? And the resistance is. Uh, this part of you know the friction losses or the total losses, the losses that can be presented in terms of, you see here, the losses here can be presented as FL over D plus summation of K, right, times this velocity square, it could be Q square over the area square, right, times 2G, right? So at the end, this whole thing is multiplied by Q, right? You see here, it's almost equivalent to the current that is IR equal voltage difference, or delta V is equal IR for each one of these resistance, okay? So keep in mind that for a parallel uh, uh, piping system, the losses in each line will be the same, but what will make like, you know, this flow rate is different is because the resistance in each pipe could be different, okay? Those pipe can contain other, uh, you know, doesn't have to be exactly as I mentioned here, right? It could be, you know, it could be something like that, right? It could have, it could be like this. And I could have like, you know, spray pads. Let me just do it like this. Oops. What I'm trying to just give you an idea here is not all the piping. This could be, right? So this could be an elbow one, this is elbow two, expansion one, contraction one, this is valve one, right? This is elbow three, this is elbow four, right? Not like, you know, the flow rate here and the flow rate here can be a function of all these losses here, right? Not only fraction, okay? So you can consider, you can consider like parallel line and every line has its own resistance. This resistance could be not only fraction, but can be also, uh, you know, eddy as well, right? And it doesn't have to be like, you know, exactly similar, right? So those parallel line is not identical lines, 
Okay. How about if, you know, special keys? If this pipe here, this pipe and this pipe identical. This is Q total, okay? If those are pipe identical, what do you think about the flow rate here and the flow rate here? Mm. And equal? Equal what in terms of flow rate? Total flow rate. Mm. Mm. What is the function? It's basically half, right? So Q total divided by two. This is Q total divided by two, right? So if I have a two by identical, that means similar. If you have a resistance that's the same, the current will split, right? Right, so excellent, right? So yes, you guys got uh, the idea. So let's solve this problem together, okay? So I have uh, I have a parallel pipe like this, and you can see here the pipe here are like connected in uh, those pipe are connected in parallel. The flow rate total is given, and this is our galvanized iron pipe. So if you look at the galvanized iron pipe in um, in the table, if you remember uh, the roughness for e every single material and manufacturing of this material, you will find epsilon in these are like you know uh, point one five millimeter okay so this is just an information given in the problem uh, indirect but you can get the epsilon or the roughness deliver water at 20 degrees c so you know what's the you know density and all the information about viscosity from uh, you know from the you know property table in your textbook right or if you are not remember you know remember like you know density on of the water is how much density? You remember how much is the density of the water? Typical. Nine, nine, eight, about a thousand, right? Yeah, approximately a thousand, right? So most of the time we consider the density of the water is a thousand, right? Unless it's mentioned at different type of temperature. How about viscosity? Mm, viscosity of the water in Pascal seconds. Point, uh, anyone? One centimeter was, yes, di uh, dynamic viscosity. It's point zero, zero, one. It's one over a thousand right, Pascal seconds. So some two numbers, it's easy to remember, just to keep in mind, okay? But of course, you can you know get exact numbers from the table if you want. But those are number handy if you uh, you know okay, you try to calculate something quickly. So the total rate is given. The pump is a wide open. So this pump is connected in a one of these lines. So this pump here is connected one of this line, and the pump is not working. So it's just like you know, it's just installed there. Okay, and in this case, for you know when we are operating this system now, it's not working. But even while it's open, because the pump, the flow rate will come in and going out without adding energy to the fluid. So the pump is not, you know, adding energy to the system. This pump is considered as an, an equipment installed in this pipeline. And it has a loss coefficient of 1.5. It's almost like a component that is creating eddies, right? And the K for this pump, so K of the pump is 1.5, okay? So he's asking you to determine the flow rate in each pipe. So if this is, you know, Q1 and this is Q2, you need to find out Q1 and Q2, okay? So let me ask you a question first, okay? Now the flow rate here, that this is basically uh, uh, the total flow rate. How about the flow rate here? 
Do you know the flow rate here? I know it might be a very silly question, but can you guys respond to me? What is the flow rate here? Okay, so we agree on that, right? So I agree conservation of mass is applied at every single junction. So whatever flow rate here, right? The total will come here, but again, the total is actually coming here, right? Because sometime, I don't know, I, I, got these, I got these mistakes in exams. People think flow rate before the valve and after the valve are different, like for example, or, you know, uh, at a junction like this, the flow rate, if you decalculate the flow rate and it's not, you know, you know total is not in and out are different they are kind of, you know, uh, they are leaving it like this in exams. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be, you know, something that you shouldn't comment on. If you have a make a mistake, you have to really comment on this. So now when we are solving this problem, so we know that Q total is equal Q1 plus Q2, right? This is a conservation of mass. Then the is constant, so Q total, which is equal point uh, zero three six meter cube per second. Okay, and I know that basically these diameter are given, the lens is given, the diameter is given, the lens is given, the diameter is given. Okay, so I can say, for example, here, this is by over four, right? d1 squared times v1 plus by over 4 d2 square v2 so i you know and then this is all equal point 0, 036 so i know the diameter but i don't know the velocities right okay now this is equation one okay now h losses let's say this is one and this is, or this is A, and this is B, okay? H loss between A to B is what? The energy A, energy B is equal to what? It looks like, you know, in this line here, it's only a pipe, straight pipe, that has a 60 meter lens. Okay, right? So if this is branch one and this is branch two, right? So H loss between A and B, okay? This way. H loss in branch one, okay? And what is H loss in branch one? Do you have any AD losses in this branch one? Hmm? Do you have any AD losses in branch one? Do you have, okay, guys, uh, do you listen to me? Okay, no or yes? Anyone shouldn't be, a, shouldn't be constant damper? Uh, are negligible if any uh, i like this uh, adam like because what is given in this problem is lenses of pipe and only a coefficient of losses in the pump that is 1.5 so those are the one that we should really consider because any other like if people think oh these elbows and stuff okay how much like what these elbows are right so you shouldn't really consider whatever is not given in the problem like this right so it's giving you the very specific information that you should consider and others are neglected. So I like that. The diameter here is different. The diameter of this piping in branch one is five centimeter, but the diameter in the you know branch two is four centimeters. So diameters are uh, different here. So branch one has only what type of losses in branch one? Hmm. Friction, right? So I can say that this is basically it's F1, right? L1 over D1 V1 square over 2G, right? It is the same as H loss 2, 
right? Because the losses between A and B from the top and the bottom are the same, right? As we explain, H loss two is what? What do we have for losses in the branch two? So what do you have the losses in the branch two? Hmm. Friction and the AD losses in the pump, right? So I have a friction. So F, F2, L2 over D2 plus, I'm sorry, times V2 squared over 2G plus K pump V squared over 2G. And the velocity here is two because this is in the branch two, right? So now this is the losses here which is this equal this, right? So which means that F1, L1 over D1, F2, L2, D2, V2 squared over 2G plus K, V2 squared over 2G. And this is your basically second equation here, right? So now the problem here is we don't know what is the volume flow rate. If you remember the equation, uh, the, the, the question that we solved in not the previous lecture, but before, when we have flow rate is not known, we only know the diameter, so the velocity is not there, so the real number is not known. That means we cannot find F. That means how can we solve this problem? What did we do in order to solve this problem when we don't have flow rates given? We guess, right? That's correct. So friction factor, we guess it, right? And I like this, you know, if you remember, I, I gave you point zero 0.02, this is good, it's a good start. So we can actually, you know, assume this FR point zero 0.02, right? So let's, F1 equal F2 equal point zero 0.02, okay? So if I put this here, right? So now into equation two, it's point zero two times sixty meter over D point zero five times uh, V one square over two G or sorry two times nine point eight one. This is equal to 0.02. And the length in the second pipe is 55 over D2, which is 0 0.04. And this is V2 square over 9.81 plus K, which is 1.5. And V2 square over two times 9.81, right? So this is equation two star, right? It's a very simple, uh, you know, uh, two equation, right? So I have from, from this equation, I know all this number here, all this number here, right? So some number V1, I don't have it calculated in my case here. And this number here, V2 equal to point this one here, right? So I can actually, solve the problem, solve the, do, the two equation together, right? So I have, so from equation one and two star, okay, I can find out V1 and V2, okay? So V1 here is 11.59 meter per second. V2 here is 10.54 meter per second. Uh, no, okay, so some people are talking to each other. Okay, that's not for me. So the, so this V1 and V2, so we have two equations and two unknown, right? So we should be able to solve these two equations together. So in this case, I can find out V1 and V2. Now, those are based on the assumption of friction factor of 0 0.02. So in order to verify this assumption, we have to calculate this F, right? So if you remember, okay, so Reynolds number, Reynolds number one is 
rho v d over mu, uh, of course, d1, v1, rho and mu are, uh, mu and uh, rho are the same. So for the same pipe, for the, you know, the top pipe, if you calculate this renal number based on this, uh, you know, uh, value that we get, it is 578000, epsilon over d is, uh don't have it here but it's point you know uh, one five millimeter and the diameter first one is 50 millimeter right so i can get f1 new right so which is from moody chart is 0 0.026 okay Same thing, Renault 2 is rho V2 D2 over mu, epsilon over D is 0.15, 40 millimeter. This uh, total here is 421000, right? Again, turbulence, this is Moody. And F2 nu is, 0 0.028. Why were we able to assume friction? Yeah, Adam, you have to go back to what we did for um, not the lecture before, but you know, one one before the last lecture. We spent time talking about like you know when we have no way of calculating uh, the you know. Um, the flow rate in the system or what is required is the flow rate the only way to do a reiterative method for solving this type of problem so in this case we start to whatever f you want right and we said like you can start with whatever value of f but of course if you start with a value that is a value of a making like a value that makes sense so if you look at moody charts uh, like for example if you assume f is equal to it's not even a number like friction factor is something between 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 and 0 0.05 or 6 something like that right so we are assuming a value at any number the only difference here is we're going to spend more iterations until we get uh, you know uh, the new value and i mentioned to you guys 0 0.02 is a you know a good you know first approximation right uh a real number again, real number. How do you get real number? You have row, you have density, you have velocity, you have diameter. Okay. Is yeah, I think I'm missing something. I don't know. Are you sure? Is that the question? Or like what what is the question? Okay. Maybe I lost, like, you know, maybe I'm not, does it matter to use the, no, no, no. We have to use, so random number one is a flow rate in the pipe one, right? So this pipe here, so the diameter here is five centimeter, right? And the velocity of one here is, we got it, right? The velocity here is 11.59, right? So we have to calculate based on the number of, for the, for each pipe, right? So. So real number in each pipe, you will determine friction factor in each pipe. We initially assume that the friction factor is the same in both pipe. It doesn't mean this is correct, right? So that's why we are correcting this now. And that's why I'm getting around number two. So this is row two and this is D2, right? So the diameter here is 0 0.04 centimeter. The velocity here is... 10.54, right? Viscosity here is a thousand. Viscosity 0.001, right? So you can get uh, F new, right? When you compare 0 0.02 and 0 0.026, this is a new one. Or you compare between 0 0.02 and 0 0.028, what does it mean? It means that uh, epsilon, okay. I don't think guys you study. So epsilon here is the galvanized iron pipe 
and this galvanized iron pipe, I mentioned that you have to really go back to two lectures before, and you'll see a table that is giving you uh, all the material and the roughness for every single material. So this is galvanized iron pipe. You will find epsilon from this table. Okay. Okay. So now I have uh, uh, a new friction factors, right? Which mean that I should really do one more iterations, right? So now the F one new. I use this one, the new one that I calculated, so 0 0.026, F2 new, 0 0.028, now into equation, right, to star, and now solve again, right? So I'm find out your new velocities. Okay, so most of the time in, uh, in, 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 in the exam, you might just need to do one more, like one iteration. So, so in this case, you can just say, you know, uh, you know based on this uh, new iteration, you just do like just one more iterations and then find out the new V1 and, and V2, okay? So in this case, I can find out Well, in this case, we have Q1, which is area one times V1. So this is by over four. The diameter is five, and I don't have V1 here calculated in my uh, sheets. I only have this here, 0 0.023 meter cube per second. Okay, do I have to calculate Q2 from this or there's other way of calculating Q2? Oh, sorry, two, it's, it's actually two, uh, equation two, not two star. Because I put here already the friction factor in equation two star. So we're going to change these two numbers here in the new, uh, that's correct. So here, like, you know, what's, once we find Q1, Q2 here is, is Q total minus Q1, right? So this is point zero one three because this is point zero three six, right? Okay. Let me let me go back to the most important piece of you know if information that we are covering for this uh, problem. I know I'm kind of moving fast, but I'm assuming you guys already studied this last part uh, of how to calculate you know friction factor if um, if you have an re iterative process. Okay. The only thing that is different in this problem from the typical straight pipe problem, single pipe problem is now we have to consider a parallel connection and there are some relation between these two parallel connections. And this different, uh, this relation is, is basically related to these losses here. You see here, the losses in the first branch and the losses in the second branch are equal. So in this case, this is basically, you know, the equation that in order to use, in order to uh, find out your flow rates um, or the velocity relation with uh, other parameter given in the pipe, okay? Um, so, okay. What is also is needed for this problem? The overall pressure drop. How to calculate the overall pressure drop? I know now the flow rate in each line. So I know this Q1 and I know this Q2. And I need to find out the pressure drop between A and B. How can I calculate the pressure drop between A and B? Mm -hmm. What is the, okay, what is relating pressures? 
Okay, what is the equation that is used in order to Bernoulli equation, right? So the energy one minus energy two is basically like you know the pressure difference, the potential difference in V square, right? So what will be considered as a pressure difference between A and B, right? Oops. Okay, so the pressure difference is anyone? Mm. Let's talk about it from this direction here. Assume the velocity A equal velocity at B, right? Z A equal Z B, right? Because the velocity here in the pipe, the same as the velocity here in this pipe. So the velocity are the same, the potential are the same. There is no information about where is this pipe is located, right? So in this case, what is the pressure difference equal to? It's only the losses, right? So this delta B here is H loss between A and B, right? So if, for example, if you calculate it in pipe one, this is, sorry, this pipe one, H loss in, in the pipe one here, that means this is F, uh, L, D1, V1 square over 2G, right? And this is a final F, right? So the final F, if you remember, it was point, you know, zero. Did I write it down here? Yeah. I did not write it down. Solve again. So F1 new dash here is point zero two six four f dash two new point zero two eight so you can just see here like you know the number is almost the same right so when you did the second iteration if you have time right if you did the second iteration the friction factor is almost becoming the same right that's why we stopped here okay so Two six four L here is sixty meter. The diameter here is point zero five. Uh, I don't have the velocity. Sorry, I didn't calculate it. But you know what is? You have this uh, flow rate here, so you can calculate this uh, V, and uh, the pressure here is two one six ten to the power six Pascal or 216 mega Pascal. Okay. So the only difference here is we are considering uh, uh, same velocity, same potential. And now the only uh, uh, thing that is left between A and B is basically the losses between A and B. So the pressure difference is is that much. This pressure difference here is delta V over gamma, right? Because the pressure difference in terms of, in terms of heads, right? So this is losses. That means we have to multiply this by gamma. And that's why this value here is, is uh, Pascal, okay? Remember the pressure difference, H losses is unit in meter. So you have to multiply it by gamma, which is rho G, right? So this gamma here is rho G, right? So we have H losses. I hope you guys, you know, make sure that you catch up with the chapter six. This is like has a lot of information, but all the information are related. So please make sure that you are using the tutorial sessions to um, practice more problem on, on these chapters, okay? Okay, I'm trying to move faster here because this is like we're already late by one lecture. So let's get into more information so we can finish this chapter, uh, chapter six today. 
practical information about this, I, I think I mentioned this. I, I spent more time just before talking about this other piping system and what is the complexity in this uh, piping system. So not all the time it is a uh, series or a parallel connection. It could be a multiple uh, connection or it could be a piping network. Yes, we'll, okay. The velocities, the friction factor, everything that we calculate at the end of the, you know, the iterations, okay? You know, so imagine if you are solving, okay, if imagine if you're, you know, you put the first friction factor very, like, very bad number, like point, like, let's say one, for example, you're going to spend like six, seven iteration until you find out your final friction factor and final velocities, okay? So you're going to use the final value in order to calculate uh, your final, uh, you know, flow rate and also pressure drop and whatever information else is asked in, in the problem, okay? So other piping system, I, I, I already spent time talking about this. Other very important information, and I guess it might be relevant to some of you that are going to do like, you know, design project later on in the fourth year, or uh, they are working on a research project with any professor uh, measuring velocities and, and so on. You're going to hear something called p to static tube. So P2 this p to static tube is one of the devices that we use commonly in, uh, you know, in flood mechanics to measure the velocity at a point. But in order to measure the velocity, we're gonna, you know, we have to convert this into something that we can read, for example, right? So this P2 static tube. So this is a P2 static. Um, P2 static tube is a tube like this. Okay. So this is a tube like that. And it has an annulus tube, so flow can go like this inside. But the fluid here will be stagnant at some point, okay? And this kind of, you know, differential pressure transducer is a device that is measuring the pressure across these two lines here, so which means that the fluid will go here and stop, right? And the other, the tube here is has holes. So if you look at this from... So this is basically, oops. okay. So the fluid will go like this, right? And this tube is not connected, so this pipe here. So there's one line here and there's one line there, right? So the fluid will go like this, right? And the fluid's going around like this. So the fluid here, when you have a, a the hole that is perpendicular to the flow direction, it is measuring the static pressure. Okay, same as if you remember, when we have pipe like this, and then we have a connection, and YouTube, remember, the flow is going like this, and this is, you know, this hole in the pipe is normal to the direction of the flow. So this is measuring the static uh, static pressure as we discussed in chapter two, or I think chapter two, yes, right? But the flow going inside this tube and then stagnants inside, okay? Now the flow that has a kinetic energy here, it goes inside and becomes stagnant. Okay, so all the energy or the kinetic energy here converted into a pressure. So, so kinetic energy is converted to pressure energy. So this V square over 2G, right, is converted into B over gamma, right? Which means that if I, you know, let's just go back here. So uh, the P2 static tube is a tube that is designed, you know, in a certain way. Some of these holes will be, 
you know, do you have the pressure, that is static pressure in one side of the pressure transducer we have? And on the other line here, it is connected to what we call it a total pressure, okay? So uh, the pressure here is total pressure. And total pressure mean the pressure of a static at this point, but plus the conversion to the kinetic energy, okay? So now if we consider this, this point here and this point here are close enough, we can say that the difference between this side here and this side here, this is a total pressure and this is a static pressure. This is a total pressure mean static pressure plus kinetic energy, V squared over 2G. And this side here is a static pressure. So if you, you measure the difference, that means you are measuring the kinetic energy, which is basically V squared over 2G. So you can use a pressure transducer or a pressure measuring device. It could be a YouTube manometer, right? In order to measure the pressure difference between a total pressure and a static pressure. And the difference between these two is your kinetic energy, which is basically your velocity square over 2G, okay? So this is a way that we can use a pressure transducer or a pressure measuring device to measure the velocity inside uh, inside uh, inside the fluid. Of course, this whole tube is, you know, is basically inside this tube here, right? So you have a, a big tube and then you are inserting this pipe. Uh, this uh, uh, device inside uh, inside the pipe. And that's why we consider the BT tube is an intrusive device. So we are kind of getting inside the tube and, you know, kind of resisting somehow. And that's why there's going to be some error introduced by measuring uh, this velocity. The only reason I'm actually covering this part here, because I know some of you might be at some point hearing about this. And if you've taken any fluid mechanics course, you should have known or you should have seen something called, uh, you know, measurement devices for uh, flow rates in, in piping system. The people are going to be like, you know, more interested in this so they can actually study more or open, uh, you know, uh, find more information about this in YouTube or, uh, on, uh, or any manufacturer that is uh, supplying these type of devices. Okay. This is a very common uh, uh, um, uh, measuring device, okay? But again, now if you have a flow that is varying, like, you know, changing a lot, right? You know, for example, fluid velocity are changing. That means you might uh, you might see some variation in this pressure drop and you cannot catch this value unless you have, you are connecting this pressure transducer into a computer that is, you know, recording these data uh, uh, fast enough, right? Uh, or you are using different type of devices. Many, many devices available in the uh, in the liter in the literature and also textbook and uh, you know in the media that you can search. And those devices are varying from you know um, uh, you know some devices like you know uh, for measuring like turbine like this like you know this is for example wind tur uh, wind turbine that is uh, using uh, in order to measure the the wind speed or like, you know, a turbine blades that is based on the amount of flow rate going around these uh, turbine blades, the speed of rotation of these turbine is increasing as a function of the turbine speed, right? Or uh, electrical device like this. So these electrical devices here is called a uh, wire uh, mesh sensor uh, or uh, uh, a wire sensor, a uh, wire probe, right? So this wire here is heated by, uh, you know, a voltage. And if the flow rate is going around this wire, it will cool down this wire, right? So if you are applying a certain voltage and you're increasing the temperature to a certain value, and then now you are cooling these, uh, you know, fluids, you can correlate the velocity of the fluid around this wire as a function of the velocity of, uh, of these fluids, right? So how much cooling is happening versus how much, uh, you know, flow rate going around this wire. The design of this system can be much more complex. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you an overview, very quick overview on this, but the people are interested uh, to uh, get more information, uh, either they can uh, wait and, and we discuss it after the, after the lecture, or they can uh, search about uh, this type of devices uh, operation on, uh, on the internet. The main idea here is to at least be aware of what type of devices are used for uh, volume flow rate uh, measurements. Some of them are using a total flow rate, for example, like a turbine flow meter like this, 
you are getting the overall average flow rate that is going in the pipe versus some of them are like the wire uh, sensor like this. Uh, we call it hot wire, for example, in this case. So these hot wire are measuring, you know, at a certain location inside this pipe. We're talking here about micron uh, type of uh, lens here for this, uh, for this wire. That means it's almost at a local point inside the pipe that you can measure the velocity at these points, okay? In addition to laser, uh, you know, laser system, we are using optics, and this laser is, uh, you know, at any point here, you know, if you have a laser light, so the flow that is going through these lights will scatter this light by a certain frequency. You can correlate this frequency of this light scattered as a function of the velocity as well. So, uh, you know, there's a lots of research, there's lots of work done only on um, on these type of devices and which one is uh, you know more accurate which one is getting local velocity versus an average velocity and so on so this is wide range of uh, application for this one of the very other common type of devices for this is a turbine flow meter you can maybe see this uh, with uh, you know uh, an electrician coming into your home to measure like you know the the air flow rate in your uh, in your house that is coming out of your vents or something using a simple device like this and which is basically a turbine a turbine meter once the flow is going around this turbine is rotating to uh, a certain speed and this meter here is correlated with the amount of um, speed here of these uh, uh, blades versus you know the reading here which is uh, uh, the volume flow rate. Some of these turbine blades are actually something like this, where we have actually, you are installing this on a pipeline, and this turbine meter is measuring the volume flow rate in, inside, uh, inside your tube and inside your pipe. This is all called turbine, uh, turbine uh, flow meters. Okay. Some of other measuring devices, you know, most of these de like device that we talk about here is an intrusive, intrusive devices. That is, you are getting it in, in, you know, are putting a mechanical uh, component inside this piping. So you are kind of creating some resistance on this flow. And that's why it creates some errors, um, except for, for example, the laser system or the optical system here. Other uh, system that we also consider as a non-intrusive device is called the ultrasound meter. And this ultrasound is, you know, is uh, it consists of like you know uh, a uh, an emitter uh, and receiver here, right? And between these two uh, uh, sensors, one is emitting sounds and one is receiving the sounds. And depend on the flow rates or the flow in between, you might see a delay between uh, this instant signal and the received signal. So you can also correlate this uh, with a velocity or the flow rates uh, going inside inside the pipe. So bottom line here, that there's a wide range of uh, flow meters. Some of them that we, uh, you know, even um, uh, uh, talk about it when you are uh, considering the, you know, in chapter five, the design of an orifice. Uh, if you remember the orifice that we use in order to uh, measure the pressure drop across the orifice as a function of the flow rate inside. If you remember the dimension uh, less analysis uh, that we studied, right? Um, so you can use an orifice or a nozzle like, like this and correlate the pressure difference created uh, be before and after uh, this device as a function of the flow rates going through these devices. Of course, you know, using Bernoulli equation, you can correlate these, uh, 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 this relation. And some of them are, you know, uh, orifice like this or like nozzle like that, a flat blade orifice like this, or even what we call it in Shuri meter, something like, like this, okay? Those are a very quick idea about like, you know, there is wide range of measuring device that we use uh, to measure flow rates or velocity in, uh, in a fluid system, right? People are interested to explore more about this. They are encouraged to, as I mentioned, stop, uh, you know, after the lecture and we discuss it, or uh, you can uh, look for yourself what is the uh, theory of operation of each one of these and error, uh, you know, uh, involving these type of uh, devices and accuracy and the, you know, the typical uh, operating condition for these, uh, for these sensors. I try to finish this because we need to start next week. We need to 
start in chapter 11. This will be, um, you know, the pumps that is used in order to drive flow in a uh, piping system. I am finished uh, with this. If you guys have any questions, please stay around and we can discuss it. Let me stop recording here, so...